Hi guys. Um, this is the um, next lecture about anatomical terminology and the intro. Um, today we'll be talking about body planes and sections and um, body cavities. <clears throat> okay, so um, with body planes and sections, um, what we need to start out with is acknowledging that you can't see everything in the human body or even in an organ or limb um, from a superficial outside view. <clears throat> so sometimes you actually need to make slices and there are specific names for the types of slices or sections you are going to produce. So first off, let's um, learn the difference between a plane and a section. So in this figure that you can see right here, um, what they are showing you is you want to imagine um, slicing the body or a portion of the body and not necessarily surgically, but at least visually slicing the body in several different ways. <clears throat> so the thing that you use to slice is called a plane. And of course it looks like a plane. So imagine like a pane of glass. Um, and that's the flat surface that you would use to slice. Um, and then the section is the cut edge that results from the slice. So for instance, in this picture right here, this would be a certain type of <clears throat> plane called a coronal plane, and it produces a coronal section. So the reason that you sliced it that way is because you want to look at the edge that is cut. So if I slice myself right here, it is because I want to see the cut edge. Does that make sense? Okay, so um, the plane produces the section. So a coronal plane produces a coronal section, a transverse plane produces a transverse section. There's some alternate names. We'll talk about those just a little bit if they're used co commonly. Um, so let's introduce you to the categories of planes and sections. So first, <clears throat> remember I talked before about the fact that because we are a bilaterally symmetrical organism, there is a um, sort of theoretical um, point at which you could hang yourself. And um, that's called the longitudinal axis or the long axis of the body. And if you have a plane that is parallel to that long axis of the body, it's going to be called a vertical or longitudinal plane. <clears throat> So, for instance, in this figure, this one is a vertical or longitudinal plane parallel to the theoretical long axis of the body, and this one is a vertical or longitudinal plane. <clears throat> but they're obviously different, so there's some subtypes of vertical or longitudinal planes <clears throat> in the human body. Sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. Um, Okay, so um, if we're doing the whole human body, then there's some subtypes of vertical or longitudinal planes. And the first would be called a frontal or coronal plane, as in corona, as in um, Latin um, for, for crown, corona. Um, <clears throat> that's the reason the coronavirus was named the coronavirus, because it has all those little spiky crown looking things. So a frontal or coronal plane you're seeing right here um, in this grayish blue color. <clears throat> and that one divides the body into anterior and posterior parts. Um, or there's another pair of terms you could use. You could say it divides the body into ventral and dorsal parts. Okay. Um, and this is a coronal section right here. <clears throat> there is no mid-coronal section because there isn't actually a midline in the body this way, So, but you could do serial coronal sections. Like I could do one that went through the tip of my nose, I could do one that goes through both eyes, I could do one that goes through both ears and all the way back. <clears throat> so that's frontal or coronal. Coronal is probably slightly more common to use, um, <clears throat> but frontal is also used. Um, and then the next one is called a sagittal plane. <clears throat> and the sagittal plane, um, notice this one's really commonly misspelled. One G, two T's is the way that this one is spelled. Um, sagittal plane <clears throat> divides the body this way, right? So it would go right down that imaginary midline 
in a human because we're bilaterally symmetrical and it would divide the body into what do you think what kind of parts if it goes right down the midline right here it divides the body into what and what parts <clears throat> left and right parts, right? And again, you are always referring to the patients or the specimens left and right, never yours. Okay, and um, since we do have a midline um, this way, um, there's a subcategory of sagittal planes and sagittal sections because you can have one right here. <clears throat> this one is considered mid-sagittal because it divides the body or the organ into equal left and right sections. But this one is considered parasagittal because it divides the body into unequal left and right sections. One of them is bigger than the other. Um, so sagittal is the more general term. Mid-sagittal and parasagittal are more specific. Even more general than sagittal would be a vertical or longitudinal plane. Now, there's something really important that I need to tell you about this. <clears throat> in anatomy, especially in my anatomy class, but probably in all anatomy classes, if there is a more specific answer, then the general answer is wrong. So if, for instance, somebody, me, for instance, um, labeled this on a quiz or a test and said, um, name this plane of section. Um, I could give you as choices all of these. I could give you vertical, longitudinal, frontal, coronal, sagittal, mid-sagittal, and parasagittal. That's too many choices, but I could. Um, so, and there really is only one correct answer because in this particular instance, you can tell, even if it was turned slightly, you could tell even better that this is actually mid-sagittal. And that means that sagittal would be incorrect. Vertical and longitudinal would also be incorrect. They're not partially correct. They're incorrect because you had enough information to come up with a more specific answer. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, so now let's look at another plane of section. This one right here. This one is called a transverse or sometimes horizontal plane of section or sometimes a cross section. And you can see what this one does here. Here's a transverse um, plane producing a transverse section. And um, that one um, divides the body into what and what parts. There's a couple of pairs of terms that you could use based on the last things we learned. You could use superior and inferior parts, or if it was the trunk, you could use cranial and caudal, okay? So um, transverse or horizontal are often labeled C dot S dot or X dot S dot cross sections. Um, I don't think I remembered to mention that a vertical plane, just a general vertical plane is sometimes, um, or longitudinal plane is sometimes uh, abbreviated L dot S dot, L period, S period. Okay, um, so now um, what about if it's not parallel to the long axis like these two do are, or perpendicular, and of course perpendicular means 90 degrees. I'm not insulting your intelligence, but there's lots of people who have different languages as their first language and not um, English, so perpendicular may be slightly less familiar. Um, so perpendicular is 90 degrees to the long axis, and these are parallel to the long axis. Um, so what if, it, what if there was a plane or a plane of section that was, you know, at an angle? Um, at an angle other than parallel or perpendicular. That's called an oblique plane and it produces an oblique section. And it's generally unintentional, but it can still be used. So what I wanna do now is I want to, for those of you who are very spatially nimble, um, you can imagine this without me demonstrating it. And for those of you who aren't, um, and I am one of you, I have a lot of trouble imagining things in 3D. Um, from 3D to 2D or from 2D to 3D, I have a lot of trouble. So we're just gonna take a second and do this silly little exercise that I always do with you guys. So what I want you to imagine for a second is um, a tube, and this is a tube. Let me make this bigger for you. Okay, so this is a tube, it's just a floppy straw. I want you to imagine that it exists in the human body. Um, and it could be slightly, it could be really curved, it could be straight, it could be anything. Um, but what I'm interested in is, um, I'm gonna study the histology of this tube, and I'm really interested in this tissue that is lining the tube. So 
um, logically, I'm going to have to cut the tube to see the tissue that's lining the tube. And there's several different kinds of cuts that I could do. So the next thing that you're going to cover after this set of notes is histology. And so um, histology is sometimes a little difficult for students because they have trouble figuring out how something microscopic fits into the whole body. So I want to take just a second and practice this with you. So I want you to imagine maybe this is the human esophagus. Um, or something even smaller. Let's go smaller than that. Let's say this is a blood vessel and I want to look at the tissue that is lining this blood vessel. And so I'm going to cut it open. But there's several different ways I could cut it open. I could cut it longitudinally or I could cut it um, with a cross section or I could accidentally cut it in an oblique section. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a microscope slide of it and put it on a microscope slide and then you're going to look at the microscope slide. Well, um, something that's really helpful in um, anatomy is to know what you're going to be looking for on the slide. So what I want you to do is just practice this simple thing with me and say, okay, I'm going to um, section this blood vessel multiple different ways. I'm going to look at it on a slide. What am I looking for? Because there's always going to be more than one tissue on a histology. Well, on this type of histology slide, there's going to be more than one tissue. There's going to be some distracting stuff around it. So we're going to do three things. And I'm going to pull up a, white, a virtual whiteboard for you in just a second. We're going to try to figure out how to find the longitudinal section of this blood vessel, how to find the um, a transverse or cross section of this blood vessel. And then what if it was an oblique section, which would be incidental, it wouldn't be labeled that. So um, let's go pull up the whiteboard for you. Um, actually, I'm going to do it three different ways. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's do number two first. If it were a transverse section, then that would mean I sliced it like this and I'm interested in figuring out what I'm going to see on the slide. Um, if it were a longitudinal section, then what I would do is I would slice it like this. And remember, you're interested in the cut edge. Yes? So I would slice it like this. And then what would I see on the slide? A lot of people say, oh, you'd see a half moon, but that's not how histology works. You need to get it thin enough that you're actually going to see through it. And then what if it were an oblique section? If it were an oblique section, incidental what would I see on the slide? So simple to some of you guys, but let me do it anyway. All right. Okay, so first question was just, hold on just a second. Um, what if it were a longitudinal section? What would you see on the slide? So what would you see on the slide? Um, I'm looking for the tissue that lines the blood vessel. And so if I looked at it on a slide, I have to get it very, very thin. So some of you guys may think, oh, oops. Hold on. Some of you guys may think, oh, you're going to see a half moon, but you don't see a half moon. So let's see what you do see. What you would see is two parallel lines, a whole bunch of distracting other tissue out here, but you're not interested in that other distractors. This is always a little hard for students. And I'm really interested in the tissue that is lining this blood vessel. So what I would find is the tissue that is lining this blood vessel right here. And how would I locate it? Well, although it's difficult for me to show you on this whiteboard, all of this out here, everywhere out here and everywhere out here, would be stained some color. And then this area right here would be bright white. Because what this is, is the lumen, and in most slides, the lumen, the empty portion of the blood vessel, would be bright white, so you could see straight through it. So you get two parallel lines, because I got it very thin. The tissue that I would be interested in would be right next to the white space, if I got a longitudinal section. If I had a longitudinal section on purpose, it might be labeled L dot S dot on the slide. But what if I got a cross section, which would be labeled maybe X dot S dot or C dot S dot? Cross section of the same blood vessel. So of course, what you would get is a circle. I can't draw a perfect circle, you know that's difficult. Bunch of distracting stuff out here. How would I figure out where on the slide I should be looking? Well, because I would have the tissue here that is lining a bright white lumen. 
Okay, so this one right here, um, the first one that I drew over here, and this one are the same tissue. They're just approached from two different regions. So, and then last but not least, it wouldn't be labeled, but what if I got um, a, um, an incidental oblique section of the same tube? then what shape would I be looking for on the histology slide? Well, I would be looking for an oval of some sort. And again, distracting tissue, it might be important, but it's certainly not what you're being asked about right then, out here, a bunch of other cells. And then the tissue that I would be looking at out here would be, I would be looking for the tissue that was lining this big white oval lumen. Now, um, is it fair for me or your lab instructor or anybody to ask you the tissue from any of these views? Absolutely, because you need to be able to recognize the same tissue from multiple different views. And we'll practice that when we get to histology. Okay, so, um, so that fills in this portion right here for you. And then we're just gonna a minute and learn a little bit about the body cavities and then we will be done for this um, for this one. Oh, before we do body cavities let me just practice with you for just a second um, can you tell me what type of section why is it what type of section this is come on down there What type of section do you think that is? <clears throat> Choices. Um, longitudinal, um, coronal, sagittal, mid-sagittal, parasagittal. Um, and last one would be transverse or horizontal. So what kind of section do you think that is? Obviously that's not cut, it's an image, but you are looking at this image. And that is of course a transverse or horizontal section. This one is showing you the same tube cut multiple different ways. And then one last thing, <clears throat> this one right here is a really great example. Um, they're all like different imaging techniques and that's kind of interesting to sort of see inside the head without cutting open the head, which obviously has its advantages. <clears throat> what kind of section is here? Again, choices, um, longitudinal, transverse, um, coronal, sagittal, mid-sagittal, parasagittal. What do you think this one is? Looks to me like it's going straight through the nose, right? Dividing the head. This structure right here is called the corpus callosum. It's right smack in the middle of the brain. Um, so what do you think? This is a be very specific. What kind of section? It is a <clears throat> mid-sagittal section.